hello guys um, in this video we are going to be solving a very tricky problem that featured in the further maths quiz of Ket academy this weekend so i'm going to display the equation there is, that is the equation it came from the topic further sequences and like i said it is very very tricky so pay keen attention while i'm going to be explaining so it's needed reading the equation when you are going to be solving the sub parts you are going to come back to the equation itself so we begin with the first question which is a we are showing that un is between 8 and 27 un is um, our sequence that has been defined for all n in a set of natural numbers so basically there are two ways to do this proof but i'm going to use one way which is what you're best with you best understand it now how do we call it mathematical induction so i'm simply going to use proof by mathematical induction to do this the other way is a direct proof where you actually prove it directly that you end lies between 8 and 27 but it is very 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 more technical than this like you need a lot of functions you need to master a lot of functions so for students that want to prepare for polytechnic yaoundé um, polytechnic douala polytechnic marwa actually you need those concepts but anyways i'm going to do that method in another video and, and i'm going to upload so let's begin with this we are going to use mathematical induction to prove the first part of this question so using mathematical induction is very easy to use because all you need is three steps but to use mathematical induction you need a statement because you need you need to you're actually proving a statement it's the true value of a statement is it true or is it false so using mathematical induction we need a statement so we begin by letting the statement p of n to be what we want to prove now we want to prove that un is less than 27 and greater than 8 for all n in the set of integers so that is my statement that i need to prove now from there we now begin with the base case from um, the base case we now um, increase height provided the base case is true the base case is just like an initial step that if the initial step is true then you can proceed but if it is false for the very first value of n then for sure it is false for all values of n because it's the very first value of n that determines actually if you are going to proceed with mathematical induction or not so let's take the base case that is for n equal to zero we are taking for n equal to zero simply because we have information about the first term which is u zero now for n equal to zero we are going to determine if our statement is true so n equal to zero what is u zero u zero is equal to a and according to the equation we have been told that or that a is in the interval it it is in this interval meaning that it is great it is greater than 8 but less than 27 so basically a is between 8 and 27 hence the statement p0 is true because to get the statement p0 i simply replace n here with 0 so replacing n with 0 is telling me that u0 which is my quantity a that is my my constant a is between 8 and 27 and it was defined originally so the statement p0 is true now having the statement p0 is true gives me the right to proceed with my mathematical induction process now the very next step of this mathematical induction process is the most important step we call it the induction hypothesis now in this induction hypothesis we suppose that something is true and then in the induction step which is the third step we now prove using that supposition all right so for our induction hypothesis we suppose that the statement p of k is true the statement p of k is true means that what that the statement is true for n equal to k so for n equal to k we are going to have uk between 8 and 27 so that is basically our supposition now we are going to use this idea to prove in our induction step now the induction step is now trying to prove that it is true for n equal to k plus one 
meaning that the statement p of k plus 1 is true now the statement p of k plus 1 is true it means we are trying to prove something in the back of our mind it is less than uk plus 1 less than 27 that is what we are trying to prove now we are going to begin with our induction hypothesis because we have something already so we begin with it and we suppose that it was true which is what uk between 8 and 27 all right so with this set we can get the expression of uk plus one because remember we are proving something we are trying to prove that uk plus one also lies between 8 and 27 using the knowledge that uk lies between 8 and 27 if you are able to do that then we have completed the induction process and we can conclude that um, our statement p of n is true for all n in the set of natural numbers so we can get the expression of uk plus one uk plus one i will simply replace n here with k and i will get three plus four times the cube root of uk that is going to give me the expression of uk plus one and i am trying to prove that it is between 8 and 27 but let's first of all get that expression from here and then we we try to see if it is actually true all right so to get my uk plus one i will begin with this uk because in uk plus one i have uk already when i'm pointing this it means i have I've already replaced n with k it's just that i never wrote it down but i believe you understand what i'm trying to say so i already have uk so i will begin by taking the cube root and then i multiply by four and then i add three i'm going to get uk plus one so having uk as that quantity next we now take the cube root on all sides taking the cube root of eight we get two we take the cube root of uk it remains itself and then we take the cube root of 27 we have three next we need to multiply all through of this by four now four is a positive number so the inequality signs remain intact if we are multiplying by a negative number the inequality signs are going to change all right since four is a positive number when you multiply four with so you get eight here you get four times the cube root of uk and here you get 12. now we need to add three on all the sides so that at the center we are going to get this expression which is equivalent to uk plus one so adding three on all the sides eight plus three is eleven at the center we get this expression and then um 12 plus 3 is 15. so simply i replace this expression here with uk plus 1. so finally i have gotten that uk plus 1 lies between 11 and 15. but what are we proving we are proving that the statement is true for n equal to k plus 1 meaning that uk plus 1 should lie between 8 and 27. so we are now left to verify if the interval 1115 is inside the interval 827 if that is true then we can definitely conclude that uk plus one lies between 827 let us verify that so let's just take the general interval which is 827 that is um, our interval now let's try to um also indicate this point 1115 so from 8 you you get to 11 first before you get to 15. now this is the interval that uk plus one is supposed to lie for the mathematical induction process to be true that is for the statement pk plus one to be true but now at the end we have gotten this that our uk plus one is in the interval 11 15. definitely it is for sure that any interval that is inside the big interval is actually inside the big interval is maybe like a repetition but any interval inside the big interval is inside the big interval so if i am in the interval 11 15 definitely i am also in the interval 8 27 so from there we can conclude that we can conclude that since uk plus one is in the interval 11 15 then it is also in the interval 8 27 and our conclusion that since it is true for n equal to zero that was our base case and for n equal to k as we supposed um 
we proved that it was true for n equal to k plus 1 by supposing that it was true for n equal to k then by mathematical induction it is true for all values of n in the set of natural numbers that un is between 8 and 27 and that is the proof all right so um if you if you have questions on it you just comment just post your question on the comment section i'm going to reply to it all right you see it is very technical very very technical so let's go to the b part which is asking us to show that un plus one over un lies between five or nine and eleven divided by eight something also very very technical as well so try as much as possible to understand this pay attention because if you miss one step you are gone so let's begin we begin with the quantity that we are trying to prove that it is between certain numbers now we get the expression of that quantity first and then we try to use maybe our previous knowledge and then we um see if it is actually true for sure you can also prove it by math, math by mathematical induction but it is going to be very very rigorous and long so i prefer that you use the method that i am about to show you it's very simplified and very direct forward so un plus one divided by un is simply equal to what our un plus one is what three plus four times a cube root of un divided by un so from there definitely they have the same lcm what we are adding up so we can separate as three divided by un plus four times a cube root of un divided by un now check this out the cube root of un is un to the power 110 by the laws of indices that is x raised to the power n or the or the end root of x is x raised to the power 1 divided by n and is any number different from zero all right and a non-negative number as well okay so though it can also be negative maybe if you take it to the denominator but in this case it's positive so the cube root of un is un raised to the power 110 now in the denominator you also have un so the uns are similar they have the same base let me put it that way and i am dividing things that have the same base so i simply subtract their powers loss of indices so i'm going to get un raised to the power 110 minus 1 which is going to give me un raised to the power negative 2 third and un raised to the power negative 2 third is the same as 1 divided by un raised to the power 2 third i'm saying this because i never wrote it down but i believe you, you actually understand what i'm trying to say work it out with your pen and then you're, you're going to get the following expression my theory on un remains intact and then this part simplifies to 4 divided by the cube root of un squared because it is un raised to the power 2 third so it is the same as un raised to the power 1 third or that squared but un raised to the power 1 third is a cube root of un and then i squared now let's begin very first thing we have something we have that un is less than or equal to 27 right from this the first proof we actually proved that it was true so we can use it un is less than or equal to 27 i've considered this case if un is less than or equal to 27 what does it mean it means that 1 divided by un will be greater than or equal to 1 divided by 27 firstly un is a positive sequence is positive since un is a positive sequence then 1 divided by un will be greater than 1 divided by 27 um, supposing that un is less than or equal to 27 let me take for an example let me compare 2 and 1 i know that 1 is less than or equal to 2 but when i take the reciprocal 1 over 1 will be greater than 1 over 2 because 1 over 2 is 0 0.5 let's take 5 and 10 5 is less than or equal to 10 1 over 5 is greater than 1 over 10. 1 over 5 is 5, but 1 over 10 is 0.1. So that is because they are positive. When you get to negative numbers, it remains intact. If I have a negative number less than another negative number, when I take the reciprocal, it remains the same. The, the inequality sign remains the same. But with positive numbers and reciprocal, the inequality sign changes. That's an, a fact that you need to know because it's going to help you very well when maybe you'll be preparing for um, competitive entrance examinations so we have one over un greater than or equal to one over 27 from there we, we um, let's also find this expression that is one over the cube root of un squared 
simply i just replace the u in there with with 27 for sure and i get my answer yeah the cube root of 27 is um is three when you square get nine so it's no big deal so from here right simply this equality sign changes to an inequality sign if i am changing it to an inequality sign then i'm going to be replacing one over un with one over 27 and one over the cube root of un squared with one over the cube root of 27 squared but now there is a three here so simply it's going to be three on 27 instead and here there is a four so it's going to be four on the cube root of this which is the cube root of that quantity which is nine so from there three over 27 is one over nine so we get one over nine plus four over nine is simply five over nine so the whole quantity that is un plus one divided by un is greater than or equal to five over nine greater than or equal to five over nine simply means that five over nine is less than it so we have proved this part now let's prove the second part for the second part we are now going to consider this second portion which is it is less than or equal to un or un is greater or equal to it because if i am less than you it means you're greater than me that's just the um the thing here so un greater than or equal to eight it means that one over un will be less than or equal to one over eight due to the same concept that i explained above and we can also get this quantity it's it, it's um inequality is going to be less than or equal to one on the cube root of eight or square the cube root of it is two when you square you get four so from here this inequality sign the equality sign we change to the inequality sign less than or equal to and i am going to replace in the place of one on un i'm going to replace one on eight but there are three of them so you get three eight now in the place of um four on this quantity i'm going to replace four divided by four because everything here gave me four that's it so from there we have 3 divided by 8 plus 1 which is simply 11 divided by 8 so i see un plus 1 divided by un which is this quantity is less than or equal to 11 divided by 8 which is what we had to prove so simply that's it very straightforward if you want to use mathematical induction fine it, it is also going to go but you need a high knowledge of um how to study sequences actually you need to know how to bound sequences and all the rest but i believe using what was um what we proved at first is actually helping us more than mathematical induction try as much as possible maybe if you're faced in an examination not to use a method twice you see here i used mathematical induction here it's really bizarre if i also use mathematical induction it looks a type actually so if here i used a direct method which is what i am using here then probably here i'm going to change my method i'm going to use mathematical induction try to create a scenario where the examiner will actually know that you are you, what you are doing you actually know what you are doing so that's it